everyone. It's great to uh, have this opportunity to gather together, isn't it? It's really special and it's already been significant, I think, in terms of us hearing from God as we've worshipped together and prayed together. So this is the final part of a kind of August mini-series around our Up, In and Out Triangle. Uh, our Up, In and Out Triangle is about having a balanced uh, uh, discipleship life. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? When we talk about growing as a Christian or as a disciple, what do we mean? Well, there's kind of three ways that we need to grow. We need to grow in terms of our relationship with God, our Father, uh, coming closer to Him and getting to know Him better. We need to grow in terms of our relationship with one another, others who know Jesus, that together we're called to be united together. So we want to grow and develop our relationships with one another, particularly as the body of Christ here at Durham Baptist Church, but equally also with other churches, other people who know Jesus, to grow in those relationships and to develop them. And also we need to grow in terms of our relationship with those who don't yet know Jesus, those who are outside of the church, those who don't know who he is. We want to grow in terms of getting to know them and helping them to, to know and find Jesus. And we've uh, put together a kind of uh, a mission picture, if you like, of the river, which you've seen a number of times now. I do not apologize for doing it, for showing you again. We have got some printouts of it at the back on the table, so if you don't yet have one, please do take one. Uh, those four arrows are just uh, examples of places where people interact with us as Durham Baptist Church. The river is Durham Baptist Church. And our goal as people come and interact with us from the community, from the curious, those who are beginning to be interested in faith and wondering who Jesus is, the close, those who've journeyed a bit and are beginning to know something of God, and the committed, those who have given their lives to him. And we want, with every interaction, our goal is that we will move people down the river towards Jesus, who you can see there at the end, that in all our interactions, we're moving people down the river. And there's your up in and out right there. In terms of the committed and helping them to know and follow God and come closer to him and understand him more. In terms of our in relationships, then as we journey together, as we, as we journey with people, we need to commit to people as we travel with them and build relationships with one another. And also, and we need to work together in all of these areas as the church. And of course, there's a lot there in terms of the out, in terms of impact in the lives of people who don't yet know Jesus. I think it's fair to say that at the moment the church in the UK is, is having a difficult season. Uh, much of the church in the UK is in decline. Uh, if we follow church numbers through the years, then the numbers are declining rapidly in terms of the numbers of people engaging with our churches. Some of what the Bible teaches is no longer acceptable to the world around us. And the church has even also been under attack recently from the government. Uh, uh, this idea, come on church, you need to get with the program. You need to catch up with the rest of us who are, are way ahead of you. Uh, and you need to change your views and catch up. We're under attack from the media and from the public on social media. There's much said against the church. It's a really challenging time for us as church in the UK. And it is likely that it is going to get more difficult as the, as the world continues to move away from God and the truth of his word. It's likely to get more difficult for us as church. So the question this morning, how should we respond when, when life is getting tricky, when, when things aren't going the way we expect, when we're not in the middle of seeing great revival and growth and and wonderful things happening. And those things, by the way, are happening in other parts of the world in huge numbers. Incredible revival. Many people, thousands, millions coming to faith all around the world. But in our context at the moment, we're not seeing that. How do we respond? I think it's helpful for us to look at the early church in Acts, at the beginning of Acts. If you have a Bible uh, with you, please uh, turn to Acts chapter 4. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, there are some on the tables at the back and on the side upstairs. Do uh, just get up and help yourself or put your hand up. Someone will bring you a Bible. If you don't own a Bible, then please take one of those pew Bibles, put your name in it and keep it and it can be yours. We love to give Bibles away. So if you don't have a Bible and you want one, 
please take one. So Acts chapter 4. I obviously, I'm not going to know, if you're using your phone app, I'm not going to know whether you're checking the score of the Lionesses in the World Cup final, just so that you know. But Jesus will know, I'm just, just letting you know. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. We'll all be looking for little things popping up on our phones, I know. So Acts chapter 4, I just want to take you on a little journey up to this point. So in Acts chapter 1, Jesus says to his disciples, wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, and then he says, then you will go and be my witnesses. Jesus then ascends to heaven and leaves the disciples. In chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes and, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. They're given uh, the, uh, lots of spiritual gifts. Peter then goes out and preaches. And that first day, 3,000 people come to faith. Uh, they continue to live out this in reality. And it says more people each day are coming to faith. In chapter 3, there's a public healing the disciples carry out. Peter preaches again, and more are saved. We're now up to 5,000 men, not including women and children. The church is massively growing rapidly uh, in no time at all. And then suddenly in Acts chapter 4, things change. The disciples are called before the religious authorities. And, and they take the opportunity, Peter takes the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. And it actually says in chapter 4 that they're kind of impressed by them. They're amazed, it says, at the courage that these men have. But they know that this must be stopped, that this is going against what they understand God to be, that the faith that they're defending, they believe that Jesus is standing against that. So they command them not to speak about Jesus again. They, they uh, threaten them and then they send them away. It's this critical, vital moment in the church history that we want, I want to just pause and look at for a moment. Chapter uh, 4, verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. So they'd come back and said, we've been told we must never talk about Jesus again. They've threatened us. They've already thrown us into jail once. This is a danger, now a dangerous situation we find ourselves in. What do they do next? This is perhaps a great opportunity because this, what they do next will define what, what the church of Jesus Christ will become going forward. And in one sense, now would be the perfect moment for them to become an up and in people, to just gather together, to focus just on God and one another, just kind of close the doors and huddle together. They're under threat. If they carry on talking about Jesus outside of that group, they could end up back in jail or even worse. So now would seem to be the perfect time to close the doors, hunker down together for a bit, keep your heads down, grow in terms of your relationship with God and one another, and just kind of tuck yourselves away. What do they actually do? So Peter and John comes, come back, they tell them, and then it says in verse 24, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. The first thing they pray, the first thing they recognize is they remind one another how great and powerful their God is. Yes, they may be under threat from the religious authorities. Yes, they may be at risk of, of going into jail or something worse. They remind one another their God is greater, far greater, far more powerful. Don't forget who our God is. They remind themselves that this kind of thing they're experiencing is exactly what has been uh, described as what would happen to those who follow Jesus. And they remind one another that, that God and not the religious rulers is the one in charge. He is the one with all power. He is the one in charge. And then verse 29, they pray this. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders 
through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. What a thing to pray. They're under threat. They're in danger. Their freedom is under threat. They can be attacked in a variety of different ways. There's no closing the door and huddling together going on here. They say, Lord, enable us to speak your word with great boldness. They they, they don't ask, well, shall we carry on talking about you or not? Because this is getting a bit dangerous and this is not really what we signed up for. Uh, Can we just sort of back off for a bit? No. Give us boldness, greater boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders. Give us power. They know what they're supposed to be doing. Jesus told them they would be his witnesses. And so when, when the thing starts to come down on them, when the enemy comes against them, they don't back off. They step forward and say, Lord, give us greater boldness. I would imagine they're only asking for greater boldness because they're actually quite afraid. We tend to ask for boldness when we're afraid. This has become dangerous to them. And they say, Lord, what we need is not protection, but we need boldness to speak and power to heal. Verse 31, God hears their prayer and immediately answers. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Exactly what they just prayed. Filled with the power of the Spirit and given boldness to speak God's word. God hears and responds. And so the story goes on. Uh, Just a few verses from chapter 5, just to see where we're up to. says this in 12 to 16, the apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought those who were ill into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing those who were ill and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Remarkable things are happening. They pray for boldness, they receive boldness, they go out in that boldness, and they see incredible things happen. The mission of God continues. God's purposes continue to be fulfilled. His kingdom continues to flourish and prosper. The religious people are coming against God, but they cannot hold him back. And it's important as we think about our current situation in the UK that to remember that this has not changed for us either. Jesus will build his church. He is building his church. I said earlier that it's very possible that things will become more difficult for the church in the UK in coming days. But it will never be as difficult as it was in the first century because this is just the beginning of their trouble. It gets far, far worse as we read through Acts. The persecution they come under is remarkable. But nobody can stop the kingdom of God. The church continues to flourish and grow in the midst of all the challenges. And from these few men and women right back at the beginning grew the worldwide church as we know it today. It all came from this group. You can trace it back to that prayer. That moment where they said, is now the time to shut the doors and say, hang on a minute, this is a, this is a bit difficult. No, they step out and God has continued to use those of us who step out in his name. And that's the call on us. As we look at this out part of our triangle, we are called to step out into the world. And the key words that I've felt God's been putting on my mind as I prayed about this is that word boldness. I believe God is calling us to be bold in terms of standing for him and representing him. Verse 29 again, and consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. So there's, this, there's two parts to that. In one sense, there's the threats part. They're under threat. They're in danger. They need boldness to overcome their fear of what might happen to them. But also, they specifically ask for boldness to speak the word of God into, the world, into God's world, to speak uh, truth and boldness to do that. 
And I believe God is calling us, as Captain James T. Kirk might put it, to boldly go. That we need to to go out into the world. There's a picture that I've put uh, on there. There we go. (laughs) I thought, I really like that picture. This sense of, of being willing to leave the comfort of what we know and the safety of here. You know, we can come in through these doors on a Sunday morning. We know we're in a safe place. We can talk about Jesus here without any concerns, any worries. But it's when we go outside of those doors, are we ready and willing to speak about Jesus, to boldly speak his name into his world? This uh, idea of, of speaking truth and speaking God's word is found in our river picture. You'll see uh, on this slide there, these, these four Ds. There's one in each section. Di- discerning is about, is about working out who is ready to begin to hear about Jesus. So even people who, who don't know anything, to, who's starting to ask questions and how can I share truth with them? Declaring is all about telling people who Jesus is. Those people who've begun to ask, who've begun to be interested. Delivering is about taking people from being close to knowing God to actually stepping into relationship with him. Again, we need to speak God's word to take them on that journey from just knowing God to actually uh, being a, a, a disciple and a follower of him. And then discipling, those who are going on with God, we need to be able to speak boldly speak God's word to help people continue to head in the right directions in their faith. Speaking God's word with boldness. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. It's one of my favorite passages of the Bible. I know I say that a lot. I have a lot of favorite passages of the Bible. 2 Corinthians 3, 4 to 6 says this. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. But our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. This uh, idea of boldness, of confidence, is not about us stirring ourselves up. It's not about us kind of right I'm gonna be better at being bold I'm gonna be braver today it it doesn't come from within us it comes through Christ the confidence we have comes through Christ before God because we in ourselves and I'm very happy to to admit this I am not competent in and of myself to be able to do all that God is calling me to do I'm not able to do that I need to to lean on him. I need to look to him for my competence. Our competence comes from God. The only way I am able to do the job that I do is because my competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. Our competence to speak God's word comes only from God. And it's important that we get that because we need to know where to go if we want to grow in boldness. It's not about reading the next self-help book or, or doing exercises to make us more confident. If we go to God, it's found in him. He has made us competent by the Holy Spirit here. And it says here, the Spirit gives life. So if you here this morning are a, are a follower of Jesus, if you know him and follow him, then you have the the power by the Holy Spirit to bring life. Did you know that? You're aware of that possibility, that you can bring life to a place where there is death. You have, by God's word and through his spirit, the competence to bring life into uh, situations where there is none. And so a little further down in verse 12, the same chapter, it says this, Therefore, since we have such a hope, We are very bold. Bold here. The word bold here is the translation of two separate Greek words that the the translators have translated as a single word, bold. The first of the two words is the same word that the disciples use, the same Greek word the disciples use in their prayer uh, when they ask God for boldness to preach. It's it's the general word 
that specifically means boldness. The second word is usually translated anywhere else. It's translated making use of. So this, this double little Greek words here, what he's saying is, therefore, since we have such a hope, we uh, can make use of much boldness. And again, to me, that's really helpful. It's not, it's not about me being bold. It's not about me doing better. It's about me making use of a boldness that is available to me in Christ. It's not a boldness that I have. It's a boldness that I access through Christ. It is available by the Holy Spirit, which if you know and follow Jesus, is in you to help you. And boldness also, the, the, that word boldness carries an idea of freedom. So sometimes it's translated to speak freely. So you know the idea of being free to speak. So, so it's not necessarily about br being brave. It's, it's having the freedom to, to speak truth. Free, if you like, from fear and embarrassment, which are certainly two of the things I feel when I think about talking about Jesus the other side of those doors. I can stand here, talk about Jesus all day. You're not going to enjoy that, but I'm going to... Hopefully it won't quite be all day. When I go through those doors, I know that I can have a f sense of fear and embarrassment about talking about Jesus freely out there because I, what are they going to think? Am I going to look weird and strange? We can speak freely by the Holy Spirit. And so it's significant that then a little further down in verse 17 of that same passage, it says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We do are able to access freedom to speak through the Holy Spirit, that we don't need to be worried because some of the things we have to say are going to be offensive to people outside of these doors. And we have to recognize that. And Jesus experienced that. And the disciples experienced that. Nothing has changed in that sense. But we have freedom in Christ through the Holy Spirit to speak those things that God calls us to speak. So we are called to boldly go. So let's just take a moment uh, as we kind of bring this into land just to think about how we access this boldness because it would be good to take the opportunity as we're together in here to see if we can access this boldness well how did the disciples access it in acts 4 very simple they asked god for it so a really important question for you this morning are you willing to ask god for a greater boldness because you know, don't you, and I know too, this is a bit of a dangerous prayer to pray. <laughs> because if I have a greater boldness, that can impact my comfort, can impact my sense of, of what I'm called to do. It can impact my, my, possibly my relationship with others, friends and family. It can, it can impact how the world sees me based on me being bold to speak about what God teaches in his word. Are you willing to ask God for a greater boldness if you're sitting there thinking well I'm not a bold person in any sense I'm, I'm not somebody who behaves like that well please remember this is not about you becoming somebody else it's not about you pretending that you're bold like other people you see maybe who seem to be more bold than you it's not about stopping being you and becoming somebody bold it's about making use of a boldness from God through your personality, who you are, what you're called and gifted to do, through your knowledge of God, your journey with God, your experience of God in your life are all things that God can use. And it's making use of God's boldness to be able to take the courage just to speak them. And it might be a one-to-one -one, uh, at a coffee shop. It's unlikely to be a, a, a milk crate at the bottom of the drive shouting down the street. It's more likely to be in those conversations with those relationships with people you already know. It's about having freedom from the Spirit to speak God's words with confidence. And remember, not because you are competent. And again, there will be people sitting here thinking, well, I don't know the Bible well enough. What if they ask me a difficult question? What if I, we get to the point where they want me to help them know Jesus? I'm not sure what to do and how to do that. By the way, just a reminder, I have a really great little resource here. 
grab one of those or two or three or four or five, we've got plenty of them. They just take very simply through the gospel of who Jesus is and what he's about. They fold up really neatly into a little uh, small thing that can go in a pocket. Put one in your handbag, in your pocket, and look for opportunities. Pray for opportunities that when somebody asks, you can say, even if all you can do is say, this tells you about a, a bit about what I believe and, and leave them with that. That might be enough initially. Don't forget about that resource. Please do take one. But it's not about your competence. It's not about your knowledge and your ability. It's only about your willingness. That's it. That's why the question I asked is, are you willing to ask God for a greater boldness? That's all God is looking for. He's not looking for any expertise, not even competence. He's just looking for willingness. Psalm 138, verse 3. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. So we're going to have some time in a moment to, to do that, to potentially pray. But I would also encourage you to set some time aside this week to, to look and ponder on this a little more, to go to God and to, and to you know, if, you, if you're scared to ask for boldness, then take that to God and tell him. He knows. He, he's, you can't hide that from him. Be free to say to him, look, I don't know about this. I'm not sure uh, if I can cope with it. And just speak and listen to him. But also, as we finish, and we're going to take a moment after this to, to pray, we also need to remember that God has called us into community together, that the in part of the triangle is, can be effective as well in this journey that we're on to be bold. Because it means we have the opportunity to ask others to pray for us. And again, inside these walls, that's a, it's an easy thing to do. And we sometimes... Uh, keep prayer at arm's length and we're a bit worried about praying for others, a bit worried about going and asking for prayer in case everyone thinks our lives are falling apart. shouldn't be like this. This is a safe place. We can just turn to the person next to us and say, will you pray for me on this? Paul writes this in Ephesians chapter 6. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. There's a prayer that we can pray for one another this morning. To, to pray, uh, as Paul requests, to ask someone just to pray for you, that God would enable you to be bold in terms of, of your knowledge of him and your relationship with him, trusting that he will give you the competence that you need. So in a moment, we're just going to have that time, just a, a, a time of space to pray. You can choose. If you just want to take a moment to pray yourself, then please feel free to do that. If you want to ask someone to pray with you, please just pick on someone that you know or someone that you're sat with. Uh, people like Richard and Francis, I guess, will be around too if you want to go to someone. Uh, the Wallers are at the back and the people upstairs would be happy to pray with you. If you so, so take a moment, if you want, just to sit and pray. Uh, yourself uh, or it would be great to see us praying for one another just asking the person next to you and say will you pray for me that I would have a greater boldness when it comes to speaking about who Jesus is and then when we've had this we'll just uh, move into a time of response uh, through worship so let's just pause God is here he knows what you're thinking. He knows uh, uh, where you're at with this. He knows if you're keen and excited and can't wait to pray. He knows if you're dreading having to do this. He knows. He understands. He's here. So let's just take a moment in his presence to pray.
Lord, if we're honest, most of us are not very bold. We're often concerned about what others will think. We're concerned about our own abilities and whether we will know what to say and how to say it, whether we'll blow it and get it wrong, whether we'll panic and, and clam up and not be able to say anything. Lord, thank you for the reminder this morning that speaking your words into your world is not about us at all. It's not about our competence and our ability. It's about us relying on you and looking to you. It's about us asking you for courage to speak. And Lord, we can do that. We can set time aside to do that, but we can also do that in the moment when someone asks us a question and we're not sure what to say. We can say, Lord, help me be bold here. Not, not back off and make excuses, but speak the truth about who you are and what you've done. So Lord, would you help us as we continue from here? We know that we have a remarkable, life-changing truth uh, that we found that you have uh, brought us through Jesus. You have led us to know and understand who you are. We have something that can change the lives of many of the people we know and love and many others we come into contact with. And so, Lord, we would ask that you give us that sense of boldness and courage by your spirit. Even if it's just passing out uh, uh, one of those little black um, gospel tracts. If it's just a, a word to ask someone if they know who Jesus is. If it's just to share a story about what you've done in our lives, Lord, whatever that is for us. And different people have, will need different boldness for different things. But, Lord, we look only to you for that because it's found in and through your spirit. So thank you, Lord. Amen. As we go through this uh, time of worship and response now, please do feel free to be continuing to pray and ponder on this. Uh, take the opportunity as we worship to pray for others uh, too, to pray for one another. There'll be time after as well when we go through for refreshments again if you want to do that. But I, I, think, it's, I think God is really speaking to us and I don't want us just to kind of Okay, well, whatever. Actually, we need to just lean, take the opportunity to lean into this this morning. This first song we're going to sing is probably a new one to many. Uh, it's 